Peace. Love Talk Radio. Peace. This is King Noble Black Supremacy coming black at you, returning back to Blog Talk Radio to uh, really build, to really build on some things, to really go in on some some different concepts and to have a, to a more in-depth understanding to, on tonight's show on black supremacy as a religion, as a movement. I want to go in tonight because I've been on doing a lot of YouTube videos going in on a lot of subjects, but I want to bring it back home to black supremacy tonight. So before I get started, I just want to tell people that are online, that are listening, to share the link on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Let them know we're on live now, and I will be going in tonight. Share that link. Put it on your wall. And if you've got a few chat friends, a lot of people have been asking about the Blog Talk radio show, when I'm going to have it, if I'm coming back with it. That's why you should share the link out and share with your, your friends in the, in the chat and just people you know and let them know it's going on tonight. Make sure you post the call-in number, 914-338-1985. I know everybody listening is probably a member of the website. If you aren't, join www.kingnoblebackrulership.com. Make sure you go ahead and join and some of you ought to have an automatic membership because you've been a member of many of the different websites that I've had, platforms, or you've connected with me on some type of social media, so you're already a member. So all you have to do really is confirm the email, go to your email and check the email, and just log directly into kingnobleblackrulership.com. Your account is more than likely already set up. It's just a matter of checking your email. For many, just set up, sign up, and just set up a new account. If, if it's not taking your email, that means you already got an account. That's www.keynobleblackrulership.com. Make sure you join that website. So invite your friends, families, let them know we're going in tonight. And tonight, can yes, is the only religion that will free you. And I, I use the word religion for a specific purpose, and I know that that bothers people. They don't like the word religion because they have been given Christianity, Islam, and all, all these religions. So it's really, since these are religions of white supremacy and Arab imperialism and everything other than just black, black love, black divinity, black honor, black respect, black dignity, black pride, all these other religions are not the religion of that. They're the religions of some other stuff. And even if you go into African traditional religions, they're not really focused on black either. White people can join and become Baba Laos and priests, and white people can just get up right there with them. So they're not really focused on being black, having anything to do with, with, with black or even tribalism. You know, not saying that there are not some left out there where you can, but majority of them, they're letting white people and people of different ethnicities and nationalities come and infiltrate their sacred religious and spiritual practices. So black supremacy... Can BS black supremacy, King Noble black supremacy is the last true black, authentic, pure, unadulterated religion or way of life left. Even some of you talk about voodoo, and and, and some voodoo is black, is very black and Benin, and in Haiti it's still black. But however, there's a lot of self hate in these religions because they're trying to do voodoo on each other. They're trying to make each other balls swell up to the size of a basketball and put each other under spells. And, and, and you know, it's, it's, still, it's a lot of self-hatred in that practice. So it's not based on really just black love and just the, build, the building of the black nation. Voodoo, is, it, the way it is presented by them, is one of the most unforgiving religions that you could ever practice because the solution to any confrontation that you're having with somebody else is to go put a spell on their ass. So a lot of our religions have been corrupted a lot of self-hatred has been has contaminated the masses, mass consciousness of black people all around the world. Black supremacy is here to clear that up, clean that up, and to free us from that type of self-hatred and, and to, to really bring true supreme black love and well-beingness back to the scene. 
But when I use the word religion, it, some people just are going to get bothered right off the bat. But there's a, there's a negative and positive to using the word religion and for it to be looked at at least for that dynamic, from that dynamic or perspective, at least for a second. If you go to Wikipedia and you look up the word religion, you get an organized collection of beliefs or a cultural system and worldviews that relate humanity to an order or existence. Many religions have narrative symbols and sacred histories that aim to explain the meaning of life, the origin of life of the universe. From their beliefs about the cosmos and human nature, people may derive morality, ethics, religious laws, and a preferred lifestyle. When you read that, that doesn't sound that bad. We just choose the ones that are against us, the ones that are anti-us, the ones that don't work for us, that doesn't put our liberation, salvation, and divinity in true and proper perspective. That's what KNBS does. It puts us in proper perspective, as it has not been put in in hundreds of thousands of years. Because even before the white man came, we had a few corrupt ideas within our religious practices and spiritual systems that even allowed the devil to do what he did. So we, we've been having a, a, something that needs to be cleared up for a while, and I think black supremacy, can be as black supremacy, will clear that up in this day and time. Many religions have organized behaviors, clergies, a definition of what constitutes adherence or membership, holy places, and scriptures. The practice of religions may include rituals, sermons, commemorations, or venerations, of deities, gods, or goddesses, sacrifices, festivals, feasts, trance, initiations, funeral services, matrimonial services, meditation, prayer, music, art, dance, public service, and other aspects of human cultures. Religion may also contain mythology. When you read that, it doesn't, it doesn't sound that bad. It's the ones that we have been given. Why must black supremacy be put in the perspective of religion, at least for this discourse? Because, for one, it's the amount of devotion that, and the approach that needs to be taken towards people coming towards King Noble Black Supremacy. A lot of people have been wanting to come down and become a part of it, become initiates and, initiates and move into it. I've been getting a lot of people saying, I'm ready to do this. I want to come down and have this experience and, and, and line up. So it's important that we make pe give people a clearer understanding of the type of mindset and paradigm of what which they would be coming into so that they could come with the right type of astuteness that is necessary to be successful in their undertakings in black supremacy. So it's necessary for me to talk about this. Now, anybody can associate with black supremacy. I mean, we have the Black Supremacy Association which is anybody who can identify with black supremacy. It is our nature. We are the supreme people of the planet. It is unarguable. So any black person can identify with black supremacy at any moment in time. No one has a monopoly on that. That's just who we are once we come into true knowledge of ourselves. We're the supreme people of this planet, always have been and always will be. Anybody can identify. It doesn't matter what, where you at, who you are, what part you, what point you are at your life what your experiences are, what you're going to, anybody can be in association with black supremacy. They can identify with it. So there's just general association. And a lot of people who are following the movement now or keeping up with it or are identifying with it are merely associates. They associate with it, which is beautiful, because that association can ultimately begin to pull people into the true tenements and to the fundamental essences of the progression of black supremacy in this day and time. That progression would ultimately end up in black rulership. So that their association with it is auspicious. And we turn away no association. And we embrace all associations. We are not judgmental or condemning or really even um, prejudiced in Embracing people's association. We don't, we don't discriminate. Anybody can associate and be in association with black supremacy. Whether they have complete overstanding, understanding, understanding, outerstanding, it doesn't really matter. 
that association can begin the blossom process of them coming into the complete realization of black supremacy. So most people at this time are in some type of association with it. And so there's the association. And there's also a political agenda as black supremacists, unlike other religious groups, have a political agenda. We are very much involved in the political reality that human beings confront at this period of time. A lot of times, different religions want to be non-political. They don't want to be involved in any politics. But we know that you're not going to survive as a group or as an entity of any sort in this time if you do not have some type of political influence or political power. You, you just won't continue to be. This is a reality. So we have a political agenda and uh, the love of our people, which is inherent in what we stand for, imposes upon us the desire to be involved in politics because we have to we want to affect the condition of the masses of black people in the world to this day we want to use our time energy and labor and resources to positively affect the condition of black people in the world so we want to be on the forefront in some manner and we want to be involved in what's going on so that we can neutralize some of the hell that's affecting our people police do brut police brutality, prison industrial complex, general health issues. I mean, just as a whole, we have to affect and elevate the condition of our people as a whole, and we are on the forefront of that. And that is our political agenda. So we have a political agenda. We must affect every, every type of legislation, every type of group or political body around the world, every type of government or assembly must be affected, we must be able to affect that group and that assembly and that political body to the benefit of black people as a whole. That's a political agenda that we have. We make no apologies about that, and we will continue to do so. So our poli the political agenda and to be in association with black supremacy are welcomed and are part of what we're doing. Anybody, as though they yell out black power, can yell out black supremacy. It's the same thing. It's the it's the elevation of. Anybody can become sloganistic. They can wave the banner. This is highly embraced. But it's not the fundamental nature of King Noble Black Supremacy. These are the peripheral aspects at essence to really come into the full totality of KMBS a lifestyle, a way of life, a religion, a devotion, a loyalty, a complete consciousness transformation of the individual, a complete dedication to liberation of the individual within themselves to come into the totality of that, it becomes more specific and it becomes more demanding as you become a full representative of that to completely and totally and absolutely divorce oneself from the matrix and only going in the matrix for the purpose of waking other people up and to politically influence that system and that world as a humanitarian effort to alleviate the difficulties that our people confront on a, on a massive scale. That's our only relationship to the matrix. But the black supremacists, the KMBS black supremacists, have come completely out of that on an individual level, their belief, their attachment, or their association with that reality as identifying who they are, as that being the meaning of their existence, of them finding some meaningful existence in that, that's done. They have renounced that. They are renunciates of that hamster wheel, of that rat race, rat race of white supremacy. The true KMBS has, has denounced that, is a, is a renunci of that. It's no longer taking any real association with that. And the less association you have with white supremacy, the more of a black supremacist you will truly become. 
when you have some association with white supremacy and some association with black supremacy, you can be no more than an associate of black supremacy. You must renounce that reality, that matrix, that paradigm. And you must renounce, you know, you, you, you no longer want to be validated by that reality and you no longer care, you know, about how that reality perceives you outside of your ability to affect that in a way to bring about some type of positive benefit for the masses of people. You have no investment in the white man's reality, where it's going and what you're going to get out of it at some point, how you're going to succeed in that. You have no vested interest and are not looking for any. Your true vested interest is in the, is in the new world, is in the new black world order, is in the total paradigm shift world. That's where your true vested interest is at. So that that's that's a that's a deep difference, but it becomes it starts to become more specific the more that you really come into this this enlightenment of King Noble Black Supremacy. It becomes more specific because it becomes demanding in the sense that it's certain things that that we just don't support that you just you we're not going to do we're not going to support these actions and we're not going to act like you are you have the discipline that you really have cultivated discipline as a person and as an individual, supreme discipline, to continue to act in these particular ways. And not only, you know, where there's a lack of discipline, then then there's a lack of morality in a certain sense, a lack of black supremacy morality, because nobody is perfect. But then there must, there must be morality there where at least one can be self critical of oneself, one can be self-evaluating to say, you know what, I've erred or I've gotten off the way or off the path in these particular behaviors that I'm doing, in this particular activity. So where, the lack, where there's lack of discipline, there must be the, the, the overall, the utmost moral awareness and consciousness that you, you, where there's no deceptive rationalization to the fact where one can get back on the path, where one has deviated to some degree or went away, one still remains on the path because they are at least moral in their evaluation of themselves, where they're not argumentative in trying to deceptionally rationalize their pursuit of white supremacy their participation in white supremacist mental constructs and ideas, that has to be looked at. And let me go in on that. I want to get specific. I want to, make, I want to bring this and make this easy for you. For one, your lifestyle has to change. With KMBS, you have to become a vegetarian. Moving towards veganism, and, and, and you have to be health conscious. You have to, it's no choice. You have to change your diet. You can't be, you can't be messing with this thing and be eating, eating dead animals, man. Your diet has to change. That's a fact. Now, can you still have love and compassion for your people and be in association with blacks? Absolutely. Can you help us on the political front, raise it, elevate the condition of black people as a whole and have compassion and love for the entire black race? Absolutely. Does it make you an evil person because you are still choosing to eat dead and consume dead animals? No, we're not saying that. But we are saying that you have to change your, if you're going to be on the fundamental basis of it, you have to change your diet. You cannot represent actions and activities that are essentially destructive to yourself because you can't say you love the masses of black people as a whole and you still participate in acts of self-hate yourself. Does that mean we hate you? Absolutely not. So you have to change your diet. And some people will try to argue when you start talking about diet and say, well, we don't know. My grandmama ate pork and lived to be a hundred and some years old. We really don't know. But I get, I guarantee you there's more people in the medical ward of high cholesterol and diabetes and these types of things than their grandmas that living to be 90 years old. If we put all the grandmas that ate pork and lived to be 90 years old and stand them next to those who are, who are dying of diabetes and heart attacks and strokes and all this type of stuff, I bet you that they would, they, they, they would get lost in, the, your grandmama would get, great grandmama would get lost in the crowd 
ridiculously. So even if we're not absolutely clear as some of the spin doctrines present themselves within the so-called conscious community of having the ultimate elixir or ultimate diet and lifestyle that's going to heal every, every individual, even if we're short of having that or having the definitive knowledge that comes along with marketing health products to tell you this is the absolute way of complete healing for everything for yourself, even if we're short of that, that does not remove the fact that you must be centered in health consciousness and that it's wiser to make steps towards participating in one's own health consciousness than to act like since we're not, we don't have the definitive cure for everything, that you might as well just say fuck it and just eat and, and consume whatever you want to and just see how long you make it. And I see a lot of people doing that. You have every, you have to show to truly be at the fundamental level of black supremacy and as far as your lifestyle, you have to show a conscious effort and a disciplinary effort to participate in, in uplifting uh, behaviors that are pro-life and pro-health consciousness. You have to. You follow it. I mean, it's a must. Even if you may be wrong about something, you might not need eight glasses of water to drink a day. You might be getting, you might be able to get away with three or four. But the, it doesn't matter that your, your behavior, your activity must show the conscious desire to be moving towards and to be experiencing health consciousness and optimal health. Your behavior, your activity must be moving in that direction constantly to the maximum amount of your resources and your situation and your condition. It must show that. Even if you ain't got everything that you need right there or you don't have a budget, with whatever you got, your behavior must be a pro-conscious, must be conscious and pro-optimal health. That's a fact. And that, that you... We can't do away with that. So if, you, if you're eating whatever, and then the, the, the double evil, we are with, with a less consumerism as possible. We want to buy in bulk to feed the, the, the masses. We want to do some gardening to grow our own foods, to feed our own people. We are anti-consumerism. So then we're trying to spend less to live the best. We're not trying to support this devil's world and support these corporations in order to live the lifestyle that we want to live and live the way we want to live. We want to, we don't want to create, continue to support the devil's world. So then you got a double evil. You're going and consuming from the devil these fast foods and these, these plates of death. You're going and buying that. So you, you committing a double evil. Not only are you not eating healthy, you're going to the most self-hating establishments to get a plate of death. And you're going to pretend as though you care about the masses of black people, but every day what your discipline shows, what your action shows, is that you barely love your damn self. And even if you lack discipline, what your lack of morality shows is that you will continue to decept deceptively rationalize activities that are destructive to one's own self. So not only you lack the discipline, then you lack the morality. Some people lack the discipline. Where they know that, you know what, I shouldn't be eating this, I shouldn't be doing that, but then they just don't have the discipline to stop. Some people lack the morality. Where they don't even see it as something wrong. Going eating fast food and spending money on fast food and buying garbage every goddamn day from the damn devil himself. And they don't seem they, they'll justify it. You know, I'm gonna die anyway, but you know what I still care about my people. There's no way such suicidal and fatalistic mentality could amount to the love of any damn body. Somebody who is suicidal cannot love anybody. So that is a that is a major contradiction. So you you got to change your diet, and we demand that you do. Can you help the movement? Of course. Can you watch the free videos I put up on, online? Yeah. Can you listen to the shows? Yes. Can you go out and still do acts of kindness of people and be on the front line on different political issues that's going to help change the condition of mass people? Absolutely. Can you come and live in our community and in our town and be among us? More than likely not. 
Can you, will you be in direct association with us eating dead animals? Would you be in our presence eating dead animals? Absolutely not. We're not going for that. It's not going to happen. you got to give up the dead flesh. You know, are we uh, fatalistically judgmental? Absolutely not, but the dead flesh has the end. Smoking the white man's drugs and cigarettes and alcohol. you got to stop it. We don't go for that. you got to say no to drugs to be on what we're doing. You gotta say no to drugs. Nobody of no type of drugs can be a, a devotee and, and embrace and accept a devotee. They can have devotion from a distance. You follow? They can aspire and be inspired and do whatever and live however they live in. But to come and be up in what we're doing, where you're gonna be in the presence of the true and living God, absolutely not. You gotta give up the smoke of cigarettes. You gotta give up the meat and eating meat. You gotta give up the alcohol. You gotta give up all the drugs. You gotta give up the molly. You gotta give up the marijuana. You gotta give up the kush. You gotta give up the hydro. You gotta give all that shit up. Because that shit forces you to be a hustler and be involved in consumerism. You ain't gonna be able to be a, a, a devotee for the liberation of black people. You're not gonna be able to be, you know, a, a samurai or a, a ninja for the liberation of black people. And you how all the goddamn time. And you got you got all of these different addictions because when you have an addiction, you're going to have to be a consumer. You're going to have to be a capitalist to get money in order to pay for these addictions. You're going to have to work for somebody. You're going to have to get a job. You're going to have to be under the white man to, to cover these addictions that you have. This is a fact. So you're not going to be of no use to us because we. I mean, you don't have. You ain't going to have no time really for what we're doing because you're going to need to go out and get your drugs. So you got to give up drugs to be in direct in a direct presence. To be a part of, to say, you know what, this person is a part of and represent what we're doing. They're on the front line. They really are. This is what this is about. Uh, this is what this is about type person. Got to give up drugs. You got to give up the alcohol. You got to. You have to do away with these different types of things. No drug of no type. You got to give up. All of your criminal activity. You cannot be a part of what we're doing and be no criminal and involved in any type of criminal activity to be involved in what we're doing. This is a fact. You can't do nothing that is going to be drawing heat from this devil on us and we're trying to build something. You're already criminal for being black in America. They're already going to make you a criminal for just trying to live, just how you're trying to live outside of the matrix and outside of the white supremacy. Just because you don't want to pay him and be his slave and be under him and have your own free culture and do, do what you want to do, you're already going to be made a criminal just for that. Just for breaking up black, you're already really a criminal in America. So why the hell are you going to go and try to create you some type of criminal enterprise and be a, and be a damn criminal every day when you get up in the morning? That's what you are is a damn criminal. And think you're going to be associated with what we're doing. You're going to burn the spot up. You're going to burn the shit up that we're doing. But capitalism makes you a criminal because that's like the second choice. If I can't be under the white man and his reality, you follow, and get the money that way because he's not going to accept me, then I'm going to get the money by being some type of a criminal. That's the same thing. You still have the same aspirations. You just are doing it outside of the confines of what he considers lawful. You still want the same materialism. You want to live the same way. You have the, you're still the same person. You're just saying, since I'm not going to get it that way, now I'm going to be a black white supremacist by any means necessary. So you got to give up the whole criminal piece. you already at war. He already want to kill you. And now you're going to do something specifically and particularly within his society to draw him on you. you got to give it up. Drugs, alcohol, criminality has to end. This greed and lust for money has to go away. These, you gotta, you gotta give up these things. These are easy things for me to actually tell you to give up. It's harder things, like when I start talking about the attitude. 
and I started talking about some of the beliefs and ideas that make you that justify you having hatred and being confrontational towards your own people. That's going to be more difficult. That's going to where your real world going to come in. But if you ain't got to the level where you can change your diet, give up drugs and alcohol, and give up the criminal reality, that's the easy part, actually. Because you can just you can identify these things and just make a decision. You know what? I'm just not going to do them. But when now we start talking about the emotional transition, with any type of negative attitude that you have towards black people has to go away. Any type of confrontational, unyielding attitude to get involved in in confrontation and being angry and, and fighting against your own people over any goddamn thing, that's going to be hard for you. Because it seems like it's easy for black people to be very self-righteous when it comes to how they are offended by their own people. It's easy. for If a, if a nigga do something that, that's going to piss you off or look like they crossed you or walked over you or you some rug or some nigga, you quit to get mad and have vengeance and to get be vindictive and I'm getting back, I'm getting back at you, fuck that, to the end of the world. It's easy to do that. But when this white man come at you, you're forgiven, you're passive, you don't know what to do, we need unity, we need panels, we need this. Don't know, ain't no nigga ready to act when a white man do something to them, whether it's the police department, the institutions of white supremacy, or just some crazy cracker that's going shooting up the church. Ain't no nigga ready to act and get their payback. But the black people, a black person piss you off in any manner, you ready to throw that person away. You ready to disassociate with that person. You're ready to condemn that person, assassinate their character, and defame them to the end of time. And you feel self-righteous in, that, in, in this type of attitude. Black supremacy challenges you to give that up. You can no longer have that attitude. We can't talk about black unity if you don't have the emotional or psychological capability to act that out. When you talk about un, being unified with people in, a, in close proximity in a way that we can get some work done and get something accomplished, to achieve our goals and to become a force of reckoning for our enemy, then that means you have to have the capability to be able to do that as a person. That means you got to have a, a long, have to have a positive attitude long enough. You got to have more of a positive outlook and positive perspective when it relates to your people. You have to have an, an, an enduring, unconditional love. You can't be a petty motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna give it to you real. You can't be petty all the time like that and think we're gonna be, we're gonna really come together and do something. That type of mentality and attitude has to die. A lot of the self righteous morality that your enemy gave you to make you an individualist in his society, once you come into black supremacy, can be asked. That's that has to go. Because all of that really promotes just individualism. It's about the individual being right. It's about individual territorialism territorialism, and you trying to protect your ego and how you look and how you feel and who you are. When you come into black supremacy, all that shit dies. And this is hard. This is the hardest for person. This, that's the hardest for people to do is to change how their psychology is wired to be able to create a, a blissful and peaceful, peaceful attitude to be in true communion among other black people. Now, that's going to be hard, but black supremacy requires this. Some people think that they can come into what we're doing in KB, KBS just because they watch John Henry Clark, they watch Dr. Ben, they watch the DVDs, and they study these lectures, and they study that, but they're not ready to, ready to change on a person level. They're not willing to change their character and their attitude, their mentality. They're not willing to work on the parts of them themselves that's counter-revolutionary and counterproductive to us establishing something. They don't want to. They don't want to change that. That's going to be difficult. They're going to have to do that. If you can't do that, you'll be no more. You you really are no mirror than the person that is just an association. You associate with it. I agree with some with what they're saying. I know we need this in society to, to today, but I'm not willing to have the type of discipline to take on the type of morality and to give up the type of negative behaviors and lifestyle choices 
to really, really, truly represent it and be a part of it 100%. I'm not willing to step out the matrix. I'm not willing to quit my job. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to completely and totally come out that matrix. The true KSBS person is willing to be homeless to follow this message if necessary. They're willing to go hungry, starve. They're willing to live in the goddamn doghouse if necessary to get this message out. Those are the true devotees. The associates, they'll donate here and there. They'll check a video or so out to work, which is fine. Everybody needs to respect it at their level. But when you start talking about coming down here and coming into this, you really don't know how demanding this is. This would be this could be the hardest thing that any uh, that any human being on the earth could be asked of is to really come into King of Black Supremacy. You probably would do better. You have you probably have a better chance of joining the Navy SEALs or the United States Marines under white supremacy. You probably have a better chance at 60 years old of joining that than you would have joining the kingdom of black supremacy. That's a fact. Because it's demanding. It's asking the person to change on such an intricate level. It's easy to say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm with y'all. I'm joining. I want to come down. I want to be part of That's so easy to say. But you get down hand and saying, well, look, this whole pa counterproductive paradigm enemy has put into you has to die. You come down here, you have no arguments. This is not the place for argument. Y'all want to argue? Call into my radio show. Y'all want to argue? Comment on the videos that I never respond to. Y'all want to argue? Go on my website and argue. When you come down here, this is not a place for argument because, for one, in the King of Black Supremacy, we acknowledge divine black leadership and divine black rulership. So that means you come down here with, with the willingness to submit to true divine black leadership. That's one thing that, that's the opposite of white supremacy. Divine black leadership is the opposite of white supremacy. White supremacy is evil and diabolical white leadership and a lot of, a lot of disgruntled, dissatisfied, disunified Negroes. They can't get anything done. So you're not coming down here to build with what I'm doing to be a disgruntled, disunified, and dissatisfied Negro. You can do that in the matrix. People talking about we don't need no leader, and as soon as you get them all together and sit them down on the panel, all they're doing is sitting there arguing with each other and not getting none done. With black supremacy, we get some shit done. This is not a place for your arguments, your dissatisfaction, your bone. You can be a petty-ass Negro in the matrix, and actually you can make money off of it. It's actually profitable to be a disgruntled, dissatisfied, disunified Negro in the matrix. You could actually get rich doing that. Why would you come and give up the matrix, renounce all that, to, to become a disgruntled and dissatisfied-ass Negro for free? I encourage you that if you want to argue, sit around arguing, and debate and all that, I encourage you to stay in the matrix to do that. If you have some issue about divine black leadership on earth, God manifesting himself on earth, stay in the matrix. No need to come down and argue about that unless you're a damn agent. Only an agent would do that. Only somebody who's really so pro-white supremacy to become an agent would come down here to waste their time for free, you know, for nothing. Actually, not a, actually really give. They would actually give to this to come down here, give up their money, resources, time, and energy to argue with us about what we're doing. You will have to be an agent because you can get paid. Like I said, it's lucrative in white supremacy to be a coon, to be a buffoon, to be an Uncle Tom, to be disagreeable. It's lucrative to be disagreeable in white supremacy. So that whole attitude has to change. Being, a, being angry with your own people, being upset, disagreeable all the time, mad all that we 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 have no absolutely no time for that. That's a fact. Black supremacy is a place where, you know, we not handing out any uh mental checks. So there's no room for for insanity or any type of mental illness. That shit works in white supremacy. They like they like they believe in mental illness and all that. This this, this works for non for profit organizations and and you know 
pharmaceutical industries. They made that shit up. When you deal with some real people on Earth, there's no such thing as a damn mental illness. There's no room for that. You think a lion, if you walk in the middle of a jungle, a lion does not care about whether you have a mental illness or not. You'll be dinner. If you jump in the snake pit, the snakes don't care if you have a mental illness or not. Your ass is going to get bit. The only context for you to have mental illnesses and mental problems and mental issues is within white supremacy. They can capitalize off that. But what we're doing, we only see people that either get it or don't got it, and either going to be dealt with by having it or not having it. That's the reality. Your justification for being a damn fool, hating your own, for being disagreeable, there's no justification for that within black supremacy. There's not even the context for that. You got to get your shit together and get your mind right if you want to be truly in alignment with what we're doing. That's something you got to do. If not, you can be in association, watch the videos, you know what I mean, subscribe to the pages or whatever, and just have your mental illness, mental illness within the white supremacy and get paid for it. Get you a check for your fucking mental illness. Capitalize for all being a goddamn black fool. Don't come down here and try to be a black fool for free. Don't come down here and be a black maniac for a peanut butter and fucking jelly sandwich. It's illogical. It makes no sense. So we're demanding for the individuals that come down to how they, you gotta have your mind right. You gotta give up the negative habits and the negative paradigm. And you know, you got to. You can't be hating black people for any reason. Even black people hating you and have a hatred towards you. It's not enough excuse within black supremacy for you to have hatred for them. Even black people having problems, they social problems that they have to work on is not an excuse enough in black supremacy for you to have one. All the gossip has to stop. Black supremacy is anti-gossip. The only thing that we got to talk about and build on is black supremacy. We don't have time for gossip and he say and she say and clickism and secrets and hidden agenda and snitching and backbiting and all that. We don't have no time for that. You can do that in the matrix. You can get paid for that. You can make money to gossip. You can get you a magazine and distribute it and you can become what, what do they call it, the tabloids or the paparazzis and all that. You can make money gossiping. What you going to come down here and gossip for a plate of oatmeal for? What you going to come down here and gossip for? It doesn't make any sense. It's a lot. You could, you could do that in the hood, in the neighborhood, and get something out of it. So all of these things that have worked against us, black supremacy is demanding you to change that on the essential level of your being. It ain't about coming back, putting on a uniform, waving a flag, talking about we going to do this and do that, let's do this. No, it's about you changing as an individual, and you'll be in an environment to prove. If you can change as an individual, that's something realistic. Because once you get in that environment, it's all coming out. You won't be able to hide your addictions to the white man's bullshit. You won't be able to hide your negative attitude and the self-hatred you have of black people that you need to work on. You ain't going to be able to hide that in KNBS. It's going to come out. And it's going to be addressed. That's demanding. Now, yeah, you can help from afar without even wanting to challenge yourself to go above all these negative issues and to give up all these different things. You can help out from afar. You don't even have to put yourself in that condition. You could, you could share the message, share the videos, spread the message with who, you know, you think needs to hear it. You can do that and be helpful. And you can go and get on the front line of issues that are, that's affecting black people by supporting any entity that's going against the forces of white supremacy and black destruction. You can do that without having to come down here and forcing yourself to do really anything. But by the time you make a position, make a decision to come and be identified with what we're doing here and be on the front line and stand for this and be, be identified with this, you are making a serious decision there 
to make some true changes on an individual level, and it can be very difficult. And very since you have to be sincere, and you have to have true loyalty and true devotion, which a lot of these organizations you really don't have to do. They really just want your money. Just just give us your money. Go out and get a job. Get us some money or do some. Give us some money, and put this uniform on, and we're gonna meet on Tuesdays, and we're gonna have a festival, and we're gonna do this. Black Supremacy is the only organization I see today, the only entity I see today, and I wouldn't even say an organization. I would say a religion, if I have to say anything, a way of life that challenges you to change on an individual level. And we're, more, we're so more concerned about you transforming as an individual than we are really concerned about anything. Because if individuals are not really transforming, we are not doing anything and anything we think that we are doing is not going to last because the future is on the backs of the individuals that have actually changed. They'll be the future. If you have not changed truly into what we are doing, into the new being, the new black being, we have not did nothing. We've not made any contribution to the world. What we are doing will be short-lived. We know that. That's why we challenge the individual to really change. So you got to give up the ways of the world. you got to give up the you that has been cultivated by the world for so many years up to the point where you're at the age that you're at now. you got to give that you up. You follow? That you has to be given up. That's going to be hard. Are you ready to do that? That should be your question in coming down here or not. Are you ready to do that? Don't just do this because you want to be a glory hound because you want to be associated with the most realest people on the planet right now. Don't set yourself up like that. Ask yourself, are you really willing to change on the most essential level of your being? Are you really to make that radical shift as a person? That's the real question. Let me open up the phone lines. Any questions or comments? If you're listening online, call in 